This is episode 82 of The Variety Artist. This is John Abrams, your host and that guy that interviews successful variety artists from around the world. In this interview today, Andrew shares a lot. He shares the secrets that entertainment buyers don't tell you, how to customize your show for cruise ships, fairs and festivals, and theater venues. He tells us who negotiates the travel and the best way to go about it. He even shares how to put together the best video possible for any agency or buyer. I learned a lot on this interview. I hope you do too. Now, on to the show. Fun fact number 1,774. John's dog is blind and has diabetes. He calls it doggy beaties. Welcome to The Variety Artist, providing aspiring artists and entertainers with in-depth discussions from top performers from all over the world. So get ready to book some gigs, make some money, and have some fun with your host, John Abrams. My guest today owns and operates the Fusion Talent Group, representing some of the best and most unique acts in the biz. Variety artist, I give you Andrew Pogson. Yay. How's it going, Andrew? Hey, I'm doing fantastic. How are you doing? Pretty good. Pretty good. Now, for people who have, who have not seen you perform, what kind of things did you do? before you had the talent group or maybe even during the talent group? Yeah, that's a great question. So I started off uh, as a magician in just different markets, whether it be in fairs and festivals or cruise lines or resorts. So that was, that was the start of my career as a magician. Now are you talking about like stand-up magician, like parlor size, big illusions, what? You know what? It was everything from, I started off doing restaurants to I, I had the dreams of a, a big theater stage. So uh, there were some big props in the show. Uh, I took a little bit of a turn down the science mm. magic world. So that was uh, anything that, that tied in together with that. So then you developed the fusion talent group. Did you do that while you're performing or in addition to, or tell me how that all came about? Yeah, so Fusion Talent Group is in existence officially about 10 years. Uh, I've been dabbling um, with, you know, kind of referring friends and analyzing the market. Originally, it was designed to be a co-op, kind of as a group collective to, you know, when we're all attending, let's say, a a certain market trade show where we're all standing side by side in in booths uh, and referring each other anyways, it was kind of a, a collective idea that got refined more into, okay, well, how do we pool those resources and, and grow it? In fact, I have a friend who does that, uh, Ken Frawley. He has Dream Shapers, and he does a, a lot of uh, school assemblies, libraries, that type of thing. Yes. And the exact same thing. You know, if there's a specific convention or something, he'll gather a group of his entertainers. They'll, they'll buy two or three different booths, put them all together, and then there will be a number of entertainers all pitching their wares. It's the three musketeers. It's one for all, all for one attitude. It's uh, how, how do you combine forces instead of compete against each other? Right. No, I, I'm a firm believer in that. I'm a firm believer. I'm in Southern California. I'm a firm believer that there's enough business out here for all of us. And there's no, re- there's no reason for me to be upset if another magician moves into my area. In fact, I'm excited about it because I can refer them business and they can refer, refer me business. Mm-hmm. Yep. So people know who are some of the acts that you have. We, ha- we have a good diversity. Um, we have three different markets that we represent and really focus on. Corporate isn't really our, our uh, focus by any means, but we do facilitate and, and partner with event planners. If we're talking in the magic world, there's kind of a who's who of, of magic from Mark Kalen and Ginger yeah. to um, the Evisons, who, who you've, uh, of course, interviewed recently. They're uh, terrific. Hardcore, Greg Fruin. Um, so there's, yeah, there's a, an A-list selection of magicians. Okay, now those are the magicians, but you also represent a lot of other folks. That's correct. So each mark, our market has its own unique needs. And um, so in the theater world, it might be a little bit more refined that we might be working on a, a musician or an interpretive dance, where in the fair and festival world, we recently signed, and believe it or not, I'm, I'm very excited about this, uh, Twiggy the Water Skiing Squirrel. I have that written down. <laughs> yeah. uh, I I thought at first, what is this? But I do remember the guy has a patent on the show. It's been in the family business for you know close to forty years on Anchorman, and and it went viral on on YouTube, of course. 
So I went, this is the actual, okay, interesting. And it's, it's turned out to be in the niche category that it is a great tool for clients that, you know, let's say at that 6 a.m. newscast at a fair, promoting the fair, it's the perfect captive television uh, in, in that quick three-minute soundbite that they need. So even just as marketing, it's, it's, a, brilliant, uh, it's a brilliant act to book. It is. It's perfect. You know, what's funny about, about Twiggy, the water skiing squirrel is that uh, a lot of people listening to this are, are of course, variety artists. And if you're a magician, you've probably heard of some of the magicians that you've named, but everybody has seen the water skiing squirrel. Yeah. Yeah. At some point, it, it, Anchorman, everyone's seen Anchorman. Yeah. It was hilarious and an honor to meet the guy. <laughs> Oh, what's, so now is it a, I'm asking you about one particular act. Is it a guy with a number of squirrels or is it one squirrel? How does it work? Okay. So the history is it was his parents' show. I believe they had uh, a drowning in the family. So it became a um, kind of a water safety show that they do at boat shows. Oh. And that was kind of the extent that they would promote it. So as he took it over from his parents, he was seeing, you know, the lack of diversity in his markets. And that's where he approached us uh, to be in the fair and festival market to expand. And this year being our first year, I met him uh, just under a year ago. And this year it just exploded. Like it was, it was, sure. uh, it was funny to see and develop, you know, where, where as a business model, it might have lacked a little bit just to put a little polish on the stone, mm -hmm. uh, so to speak it. Uh, yeah. And, and the clients just ate it up and, and people, the crowds, it was just hilarious to see. <laughs> Were they loving it? They they will eat it up. They, it's just <laughs> much like a like a street performer show. Of course, the the big the big punch is, is the squirrel water skiing. So it's about a 12, 15 minute show. So everything's leading up to that. And there's some go comedy byplay and and of course some water safety lessons to be had. But people love it. And it's it's one of those where everybody pulls their phone out. So you're you're really oh, yeah. engaging in your uh, in your live social media to so a lot of clients have really recognized that's where I see the value uh, in bringing it in, not just the show content, but, but the buzz and the novelty of it. Right. And they're doing the marketing for you when they're posting on their Facebook, Instagram, TikTok exactly. now. They're, they're creating, so for a client, they're creating awareness of the event happening in, in real time. So of course that's gold for, for an event. And do you ever use that? This is a kind of off the wall question. Do you ever use that idea when you're selling the squirrel or other events? Yeah. So I, I map it out exactly for that because most major events are doing those, those early 6 a.m. live on site interviews and they're looking for content to create, to show, Hey, come on down to the fair, let's say. And so for that, uh, you're not, you're not trying to go through a whole illusion routine. It's, and here's Twiggy, the water skiing squirrel. And you just get that clip that's and back to you live in the studio. And, and immediately the client goes, yep, no, that's, that's the value that we're looking for. <laughs> so here I am. I'm a magician that's worked 20 years on my craft. And here I am putting together a nice video and then working my butt off to try to get a good act together. And I'm usurped by Twiggy, the water skiing squirrel. <laughs> and welcome to show business. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about the different venues. You get a call or, or an email or a text, whatever it may be. And, and they say, Hey, I want this particular act. Right. Sure. And then uh, how do you differentiate or how do you price between like cruise ship, fair and festivals, theater arts venues, et cetera? Yeah, that's a great question. It's my job to help navigate an act through that jungle of, uh, of those markets. Hey, if you're wanting to work in this market per se, here's your range. Here's where your complexities uh, of, you know, if you were a big illusion show and you wanted to work in the fair world, um, you're going to be exposed to an open stage with no backstage wings and you might have to lug it across a dirt parking lot. Yeah. So you might want to reconsider to be more of a suitcase stand-up show, still, still being an entertainer, but providing to the market within. Mm. Um, whereas a theater, they might be looking for a little bit more sizzle, a little bit more production, value in the show and you want to cater your product in quotations uh to that client's needs cruise ships what are the, some of the things you need to be prepared for on cruise ships space and real estate on a ship is a valuable commodity so you coming on with perhaps a massive illusion that doesn't pack down that takes up a large footprint that might be a one minute sizzle in your show mm -hmm. is going to very easily be chucked off as soon as possible some cruise lines are, are 
interesting where they do support that. Some are fly on acts and they're looking for efficiencies. So as time has gone on, the illusion show is becoming a thing of the past. It's an, mm. it's an interesting little time frame for magicians that we're in. Um, and, and cruise ships are recognizing that uh, space is no longer with all the other production shows that they have and they're storing four different production shows backstage and it's, it's all very tight, very well planned out. Mm. So it's tough. And that's where comedy magicians are shining for sure. Uh, let's say for example, I'm, you know, you book me for a cruise ship yes. and I'm in the Los Angeles area and the ships go out of Florida, for example, do you negotiate the travel and the hotel and all those different things also? For the most part, in the cruise line market, they'll want to take care of your travel. They have a travel in-house travel department that they'll be flying in. They're executive chefs from, from, so they have their own little engine that you sometimes get compiled into that engine, which actually the efficiencies work out great. Let's say they're flying you into a foreign port. There's communications with a port agent to pick you up, to take you to the ship. Um, and sometimes government or immigration laws require that step. So for, you to book it yourself. It's just not efficient in, mm. in the realm of the size and scope that they're uh, dealing with. So when you're booking me for a cruise ship or, or fair festival that's somewhere away from where I live, okay, mm. you're making all of those arrangements for the hotel and stuff. And should I follow up on that, those things to make sure that they're done? Yeah, there's typically um, conversations perhaps a month out. There have been cruise lines where you get a flight the day before. It just depends on them. Uh, but that that falls on them a little bit in terms of either theaters or fairs and festivals. We try to build travel into your costs. So we, we try to form a specific fee and hopefully route. So depending on where you're from, we either target your, let's say you just wanted to stay in Southern California. We wouldn't be trying to sell you in Wisconsin. Mm. If the opportunity came up and it presented itself for your better interest, if you said, hey, I'd love to work 20 days in a row, then we would come to uh, a price breakdown that we could present to that client uh, and hopefully just kind of make it a one-stop price where we're not trying to upsell them on travel, uh, try to build that into your just overall straight cost. Right. And all the different markets are, are priced and contracted way differently. Like, for example, you know, a cruise ship. Yes, is is priced and and performed way differently than the fair festival or an individual or or one or two night uh, stay at a theater arts festival. Yep. So so how do you know how to contract that or price that? So as an agent, you're in a way you're you're gaining access to uh, my or as others speaking on behalf of other agents, our friends, our our relationships that we've built in our own careers. In, in the cruise line world, for example, um, each cruise line has its own complexities and even as their own brand, when they're doing different itineraries, mm. have different complexities. So if they're off in Europe, it's very rare that they might fly a guy in from Southern, uh, South California to do their med cruise for one week when they can source that perhaps from England. Oh. Or if they were Costa cruise line and they're very Italian directed, they'll... they'll uh, try to bring in something from their culture and play to their audience. Gotcha. Um, but even the difference from the Caribbean, which is a little bit more laid back, loose, a little bit of a party atmosphere to more Alaska, where it's laid back and chilled, even the more refined and sophisticated performers would play well in certain cruise lines where they might not in the Caribbean, if that makes sense. So you're really fine pointing who might be a general practitioner and then who might be a very specialized act and niche, but fit fits very well on a certain itinerary, which might not in a in a common itinerary. Right, and, and you've learned over the years which cruise lines, which fairs and festivals want which type of act. That's an ongoing daily process. So as I'm learning those complexities, I'm also out scouring and searching for acts that I personally would want to support um, that act and, and pair and match them. Hence the name fusion. It's a, it's a blending of both providing for my clients, but as well supporting my acts and kind of best to where they would, they would slot in. Well, then let's, let's switch to, to your, your different acts. I, I, I looked on your website and I noticed every act has its own page as they should. Yeah. 
Yes. And every act also has a video. Yes. Now, now how important is showing that video nowadays? You know, it's a visual tool. Um, they, they say, you know, a picture is a thousand words. So a video, think of how many words that is. You're, you're gaining that access and information. It's not a live showcase, but it's a great way to showcase what you are selling, what your product is. If you imagine a menu in a restaurant, mm -hmm. if you're just going by the words, you can get a description. If there's a picture, you can get a better visual of what you will be buying and consuming. And it's true. I think I have, I have ordered from a menu and looked, looked at the menu and said, oh, well, I'd like that. You know, I'm pointing it at, at the picture as opposed to the description. 100%. That goes for showcasing, even, you know, whether you see it live and or in a video format, you can within those hopefully three minutes, you don't need anything more than three. It's starting with attention spans now. It's get to the point and give us, you know, a minute at most because mm. their, their time is valuable as well as a buyer. So they can gauge on, you know, the superficial appearances or immediately if it's connecting their vision and what they want to present. So videos are important. Yeah, the time thing's interesting too, because I know I looked at a lot of the videos on your site and a lot of them are any, you know, three minutes, four minutes, whatever they are. And I found myself watching the first minute and going, oh, okay, yeah, I get it. You got I, it. Get, I get the idea of, the, you know, it's a water skiing squirrel. Yep. Do I need six minutes of that? You, you do know, not. It, it's a magician that, that does big illusions. Do I need six minutes of that? I need, I need 30 seconds or a minute of it to see kind of what they do, what their personality is like and what's going on with them. Yeah, that would apply very well to correlate with television broadcast. How long are commercials? Usually that 30 seconds. However, you are noticing a, a, a trend in the last couple of years, especially with online and YouTubes, that those videos, they got five seconds before you click skip ad. That's right. How do you get that five second capture of that subliminal message in five seconds? That's how crazy it's getting. Interesting. With that in mind, I wonder if it's smarter to put all your great stuff, all the, the real interesting, crazy things in the first 30 seconds of the video. Yeah. And you'll see many that will do a montage. Uh, Franz Harari is, uh, I bow to that man for his innovations and in promo. By the way, uh, very famous magician. For those of you that are not magicians out there. Uh, Franz Harari is as big as they come yeah. and has been a pioneer and innovator of, uh, of show business and business being that bigger of the two words. Brilliant. So when they send you the link, are you looking at that link going, well, let's see, I really like the act, but I'm not sure if it, if it will sell to my, to my buyers. 100%. Yeah. yeah. So I, I have a brand myself and a product I would consider to be a boutique agency. I'm not a chop shop where I want a, a large roster. I'd like it to be of quality. So I have a reputation. If I call a client, let's say if it's a cruise line, um, back in the day, there'd be stacks of videos and packages that they'd receive. And with, through an agent, you get fast-tracked. But even in the world of agencies, if that call comes in, they're not getting a daily call from me. So when it does come in, they do perk up and say, okay, Andrew's got something. Let's pay attention. All right. So if I oversaturate my brand, then the overall encompassing brand suffers. If someone wants to submit to me, whether it's something from a client's eye, whether they jump at, at it or not. Um, I, of course, I want to streamline my business as easy as possible and make my sales uh, jump instead of having to put work and energy into, uh, yeah. into trying that sale. Do you ever get a, a video or a package of somebody that is just right on the cusp and you're thinking, well, just if we tweak this and we tweak that, do you ever mentor or, 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 or help people out with their acts? 100%. And if there's a passion um, that I love, it's exactly that. And I've gone through many of performers that I, as a kid, idolized and uh, still to this day idolize. Perhaps video editing just was not their strong suit. Mm. And not to claim that it's mine, but just to have a different eye and say, much like you said, hey, let's, let's stick this clip at the beginning. This is, this is your impactful clip. Like, let's not build it to the end because we might not capture them all the way through your video. So really dissecting and, and putting the time and energy and just having a new set of eyes, always have to invest my time into that. With up and comers, very passionate. I had a lot of, again, respected uh, idols that took the time 
uh, invested in me to send the, uh, in quotations, the elevator back down to, to really, you know, when I didn't have the proper tools and answers, they, they took the time to really help me. So I, I think it's important to pass that along. I was trying to, I, I listened to a bunch of my own podcasts and I tried to make a list of the top three things that people said. And that was number two. Okay. Yeah. Get people to, to help you out with whatever it is, you know, be yep. open to suggestions to people oh, yep. that maybe know a little more than you do, you know? Yep. Yeah. 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 So when someone calls you, do they call you specifically for an act or do they sometimes want you to put the whole thing together with lighting and, and sound the whole thing? There are certain events that we do a full package. Many of the markets that we do promote to, for example, a cruise line, they would have their own sound and lighting engineers. So we're, we're sourcing those acts. There's a little bit of a threshold to introduce an act to that market. It's becoming more competitive. As they grow, they are reducing some variety act positions. So if they increase, let's say from three production shows to four to make their cast that they already have on board more efficient. Well, that reduces one night. Well, that's 52 nights a year of just on that one ship that could go to a magician that is now not. Yeah. So competition, it's, it's getting a little tougher. Things are, you know, as any market, it's getting a little bit more refined, but in that respect, again, we're, we're trying to cater to our clients needs. Well, let's talk buyers then. Mm. <laughs> it's one of my favorite subjects because, you know, without the buyers, we're out of business. Sure, of course. So, what does a buyer want? I mean, I, I know that's kind of an open question, but. It's a great question. Are there specific things that, that a buyer would want? Yes. To make their life easy. Mm. Make their life easy. So come prepared. Have all those professional insights the the age of being a diva and requesting random things that will cost their time and energy it quickly is recognized um, and will only be tolerated so long. It doesn't matter how good you are. I've seen many great acts make many great mistakes. Mm -hmm. So our jobs, my job especially, is to be a problem solver. And ultimately, how do I solve their problem? And if their major problem is to fill their job is to buy something and sometimes they need their hand, uh, hand held a little bit on they don't know what to buy it's it's good to listen to what they need but to come prepared with a product that they can move on with their day because it, it's not just their job to book that one they have many uh, responsibilities that is the lesson anyone takes away make their life easy solve those problems Oh yeah. And you know, when somebody calls, I do a lot of, as you know, I do a lot of schools mm -hmm. and I get a lot of calls from PTA moms mm -hmm. have may or may not have done anything like this before. So you're right. Sometimes it's a hand holding situation where you have to explain exactly what's going to go on and, and make it very easy for them. And sometimes it's, it's a principal who's done it a thousand times, you know, has had, had a thousand entertainers at their school. And in, in that particular case, we need just to make sure everything's taken care of. Would you agree as a school performer, one of the greatest tools that you can offer included probably in your product and your package would be providing sound equipment? Yeah. I'm glad you asked that because I bring my own sound system everywhere all the time. I, I learned my lesson very early on uh, when I went to a, my first couple of schools. They're like, oh yeah, we have a full sound system. We're totally fine. And I'm like, great. I'll show up. I'll do my show, do my thing. And so they show up with a boom box for 300 kids, no yep. microphone. No, you'll be fine. It's a great sound system. So yeah, now I carry my own sound system everywhere. I think that would be the best example in that market of being an efficient problem solver where even if they do have their own and you patch into it, great problem solved, but to not have that issue to say, I, I can't work with this, therefore I can't produce the product that I've promised you. Right. The investment of a sound system for any performer, I think, is the best. And as a backup secondary, is it any city you can rent. So I think it's well worth the investment of perhaps a ballpark, let's say, for two you know, speakers on a stick with a mixer, 100 bucks. Yeah. It's well worth it. I interviewed Ace Miles. Do you know Ace Miles? Oh, yeah. Pirate. He is amazing. And that setup, oh, man, he is awesome. <laughs> That's what I was about to mention. He brings an entire pirate ship. Very well. 
if you haven't listened to it yet, you got to listen to my interview with him because he talks about how he came up with the idea of the the ship in his and he he built it in his front yard. Okay, on the street, like a like a crazy person. Of course. <laughs> so you have a let's say you have you know you book a fair festival in in September. Okay, September first. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So then you know the following year they're going to have the same festival on September first. Yes. Do you follow up on that, knowing that that festival is going to be taking place? So, as an independent act, to which I was before I really grew my agency, that was a real struggle for me. Of course, they want some diversity. In the fair and festival world, there's things that fall into what I call the traditions category. Uh, They're not going to change up cotton candy and corn dogs. But they might have a sizzle, like Twiggy, the water skiing squirrel, or in the food category, they might have, let's say, a cricket, a chocolate covered cricket or a grilled cheese cricket sandwich that gets that media buzz. <laughs> well, they're not, it's not sustainable. So recognizing and, and really in, reflecting on what your product, what your brand is and where you want to work. If the client wants to move on, well, there's no reason why you can't engage them in a, let's say a four, maybe five year rotation pattern. Mm. As an agent myself, I recognize that. And, and once you see it on the roster, there is a pattern. A nine-time world champion juggler, but I have five other jugglers. So I've tried to create these clockwork tours that there's many events, as you asked about September 1st. So if a juggler works that event in Southern California, September 1st, well, next year, I'm already planning a year out to put him, let's say, in Idaho. So he's still working the fair is getting diversity and, and a change of, uh, I guess their window dressing, you could call it. So it's not the same old, same old. Yeah. Because they might say, that was so good. We definitely want you back next year. So you, you want to have those open dialogues, um, but understanding it's okay to, to put them on hiatus, focus on that target week that you do want to engage work and, and really source where else you could work potentially somewhere else in the country. Mm. So there's many complexities in that, but doesn't mean you're out for good. It just might mean you're out for the next year or two. All right. We're going to switch gears a little bit to fact or something John just made up. Sound like fun? Sounds like a lot of BS coming my way. <laughs> it could be. You never know. Is it fact? Or is it something John just made up? Ah. All right, so here's what's going to happen. I'm going to say a headline, and you're going to tell me whether it's true or not. And if it is true, tell me a little more about it. Okay. Okay, here we go. First headline. Once, when performing the master prediction box, there was no prediction. Oh, my gosh. You Okay, you did some research. This is interesting. This is a great story. So for those of you that aren't magicians, there's a, a, a prediction where you can go around an audience and uh, uh, this happened to be on a cruise ship <laughs> and we were compiling uh, random things from the audience. And in the end, it's basically a, a list of those random things that are in quotations pre-written. Wait, so you're walking around the audience getting random ideas from people and writing them down. Is that right? right. Yeah. So, so an object is tossed randomly, a stuffed animal. and and I would, uh, I believe the plot was we were going on the worst vacation. Of course, glorifying that they're on the greatest vacation in the moment. But where would you send somebody on the worst vacation, whether it be a boss or a neighbor or, or, or a relative? Got it. So you could send them anywhere in the world, the worst place, you know, and it would be random and as creative as they could come up with to it, just the hilarity of it uh, in itself. You can get some great improv moments. <laughs> At the end, there's a box hanging that's been presented since the beginning of the show, a sealed locked box. A woman has the key to the box. There's a, t- a sealed tube, much like you'd see at uh, like a drive through bank with a, with a screw-off lid. And then inside, there'd be either a large sheet or, or in my case, a, a letter format thanking the travel agent. And then all of those predictions that they just spit out randomly from different people in the audience would be on that handwritten letter. Got it. Well, there's a little bit of, and again, I don't want to tip the secret, but there might be, let's say, someone else involved. And that someone else involved okay. <laughs> just happened out of me traveling alone uh, was a newbie rookie 
technician on board that I just kind of pulled aside and said, Hey, I'm going to teach you something real quick. This is what I need you to do. Mm-hmm. Well, he followed all those steps except one, which was <laughs> putting no. that letter into the tube, which was in the box, which there's a math, uh, a magic method. Yeah. So I do a seven to possibly a 10 minute buildup of a finale of a late night adult show. It, it, there's a lot of hype around this and there's a lot of a wow factor about to come until the, the anticipation and suspense. We open the box and I look inside and I do see the bank tube, but there is no letter in there. Oh no. And the calculation in my mind of <laughs> what is my out on this one? I, I, I couldn't blame anybody. I couldn't, it was one of the most awkward finale exits of me. So what, wait, what did you do? Did you just go, thank you? If it was as, as cleanly not awkward like that, this was one of, it was a very embarrassing situation. I was able to giggle and laugh about the situation of it. And it's hard to yell at somebody that just did not have that comprehension of the plot and <laughs> the necessity. Let's put it that way. And I chalked it up to, okay. <laughs> Wait, was that your finale? Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right, we're going to go to the next one. Andrew's duck had a Cayman Island passport with a picture. So one of, uh, as a magician, wait, is that true? That is, yeah, you found that. That is totally true. And, and one of those uh, gong show stories that has clearly been told to you by somebody. But anyways, uh, because I was flying so frequently in and out of the Cayman Islands, one of my comedy bits, I used to produce a live duck, like the Aflac Peking duck Mm -hmm. stage. And it was a great magical production moment. And it was a lot of effort, a lot of red tape to go through traveling um, through international borders. And the Cayman Islands finally got so fed up with uh, my consistent entries and, the, and the, the paperwork that had to go through on their end, their, their regulations they were even getting frustrated with, that they issued a proper Cayman Islands passport. Oh. I had to get a passport photo. I went to the passport photo office with my duck. <laughs> And they're looking at me like I'm a crazy person to get this specific sized photo as long as, as long as I had the proper paperwork with, you know, the chip ID that they would scan much like a little inserted uh, chip into a dog had the duck, but they do all that and they would stamp it like a formal entry and people, first of all, they thought I was lying and I'd flash this passport and they just shake their head at the the absurdity of a duck having a passport, which I, I still even shake my head at. Um, but, oh, it was, yeah, funny, funny stories traveling internationally with a duck for sure. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. All right, next one. Yeah. One of the acts that Andrew represented ate the original contract and its writer. Yeah, he, you know, that's not true. <laughs> I, I was going to run with that just for your listeners, but yeah. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah. All right, last one. Mm-hmm. An act Andrew represented was booked on a cruise ship, took one look, had an anxiety attack, and left without notice. Ooh, this still haunts me. Yeah, so uh, uh, this is true. <laughs> okay. It did happen, and uh, I did have an act fly into a foreign port. I, I believe it was in Colombia. Looked at his room. And, you know, and on a cruise ship, you're not dealing with the, the Hilton and, and the extended suite that you might get upgraded. You're dealing with a cruise ship, not to say it was small, but a little tight. It's a cruise ship. Mm-hmm. And then he saw the theater, and it's a pretty impressive theater. And, yeah, he, I believe, had a panic attack. He didn't tell anybody saying, this is happening. I need to inform you, but this is happening. So, so it took him about two weeks to, to finally call me. But I got the call from a cruise ship saying, uh, you know, your act stepped off the ship in Colombia 
and oh, no. there was a good there was a good twenty four hours that I was uh, legitimately worried for his safety that you know perhaps something would have happened, but then through a, a, a mutual friend I was able to to source the information that he had a panic attack. So wow. So you replaced him. You ended up replacing him. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, of course the it's okay. Some, some people even you know we test them on ships and they turn out they have a seasickness. They sure they can't handle it. So that's a condition that we have to honor and respect and, and navigate through to hopefully source them into a different market. That was back Ooh. or something John just made up. Ah. Uh, Andrew, do you have some advice for the beginner? Someone who's just starting out? Nope. You're on your own kids. <laughs> Too bad. <laughs> Read all you can. Just do whatever you want. Yeah, figure it out like the rest of us had to. (laughs) Uh, No, not at all. Uh, The best advice, depending on what your passion is, if if you're a beginner and you you're crazy enough to want to be in this show business world, you know, a simple lesson when I was younger is uh, is the business is the bigger of the two words. Still put great focus into your show, but be aware that you are in business, And, and I believe a lot of acts suffer from not having those business skills. Yeah, how about some advice for the working pro? Um, innovate, don't, don't become stale. Look to the young and, and up and comers. See, see what the new, you know, there's a lot of negativity buzzwords around millennials, but they're the future and they're the ones that are nipping at our, uh, that are heels. Mm-hmm. Surround yourself with positive inspiring people whether it be younger or older but always innovate and and look forward instead of thinking that you've arrived and you'll be sustainable forever you will not be all right give us one recommended book and i'll let you go oh john let's not let this go let's keep <laughs> let's give it this will be the five hour interview right um you know what i heard you say that about two minutes ago about a recommended book so i've been in the back of my head trying to think i'm going to give three books okay in the magician world there's a trilogy called uh the Fitzky trilogy it is from everything from the business to the the fine craft and to showmanship it is a wonderful book series wait say, say that again it's the what the what trilogy the Fitzky trilogy Fitzky okay wonderful trilogy and just information that is gold just really important information um, I would also recommend uh, for the business especially in the magician world it, it lays out different markets and material that can correlate to really if you, if you are perhaps a beginner or or want to break into a different market great insights at Joel Bowers hustle hustle Oh yeah. In fact, here, here's a story about that real quick. Years ago, when I first started this business, I went to a magic auction. And for anybody who doesn't know what a magic auction is, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's an auction that you go to where they're auctioning off magic things and props at the time, videotapes, that type of thing. And all these things were going for sale, you know, sponge balls and rings and, and small illusions and things. And then there was one cassette tape series called Joel Bowers Hustle Hustle. Ooh. And it was the only thing that I bought at that auction and probably one of the best investments I've ever made. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And the last book I'd recommend, even though you only asked for one, is uh, a classic, Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People. Okay. It's by far, it should be in high schools. It is um, a lesson on how to be fostering and building relationships sincerely i think one of the, one of the biggest lessons in the book is uh, the most important word in the english language is john it's that person's name hmm. it's connecting on a name basis and techniques let's say if we're focused on the name of and i'm sure we've all done it where you meet somebody and literally 10 seconds later you're asking yourself shoot what was their name <laughs> yeah so it's a book filled with with techniques of okay when you meet somebody connect it to something that you'll remember but all of those life lessons that translates i think the book was written in the 50s and it's a classic Mm. but in in a relationship business that i think would be my biggest recommendation And, and if you haven't read it i suggest you run and buy it yeah well thanks andrew for doing my show that was fun
Hey, no, thank you for your time, John. And thank you for uh, all that you do for the community. It's, it's really, your podcasts are just awesome. Oh, thanks so much. I, I love doing it. Do you have any social media or something, some kind of website or something that you'd like to promote? You, you know, it, yeah. If you want to take a peek at fusiontalentgroup.com, feel free to send an email, anybody. And if, if you're uh, keen on submitting, just send an introduction and promo video link and we'll chat. Great. And thanks to all my variety artists. If you found this podcast valuable, tell a friend to listen. Say, hey, listen to this podcast. It's really cool. Uh, you can reach me from my Facebook page. Just shoot me out a message there. And while you're there, join my Facebook group at The Variety Artist, where you can ask me to ask questions of our guests. Thanks once again, Andrew, for doing my show. Oh, thank you. Appreciate you, Jane. Now go out and book those gigs, make some money, and have some fun. That's all for this episode of The Variety Artist. But your journey continues on our website. Go to thevarietyartist.com for more strategies, insight, and resources, as well as show notes on today's guest to assist you in your career. We'll see you on the next episode of The Variety Artist. But until then, go out and book those gigs, make some money, and have some fun.